Emma. I'm Sage. And I'm Gabby. And, and welcome, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today on Science Face, we'll be talking about how fear affects the brain and the central nervous system. There are two types of nervous systems. We will be talking about the things in pink, the brain, and the spinal cord, which is the central nervous system. Throughout the rest of the body, in blue, we see all of the nerves, and that has to do with the peripheral nervous system. In this picture, we see the hippocampus, the amygdala, and the peripheral cortex all working together. The hippocampus regulates our memory and emotions, while the amygdala turns on the flight or fight or freeze mechanisms. While the peripheral cortex has to do with the thinking and logic and what to do in any situation. Today we're going to be focusing more on the fight, flight or freeze mechanism that is triggered by the amygdala. Have you ever wondered why you're afraid of being alone in the dark? <laughs> Have you ever wondered why you're scared of heights? Oh, no. <laughs> or have you ever wondered why you're so afraid of dogs? <laughs> this fear is triggered by the fight or flight mechanism which goes through three stages. evolutionary response to keep us hidden from potential threats. The freezing response to fear is in all animals and this can also be considered shock. Like as if you were in a car accident and then you got into shock because you were so afraid of the impact that occurred. The adrenaline kicks in when we have been spotted. If running isn't an option, the same adrenaline helps us fight. When the three stages of the central nervous system have been activated, it is very, very hard to reverse them. In some cases, we can use breathing techniques to help calm our amygdala down. The amygdala is in a small part of our brain and it controls the majority of the central nervous system. When we practice deep breathing when we're in fear, it helps train our amygdala so when we are in real fear situations, we can calm it down and think more clearly. The three stages of this mechanism are triggered by a small almond shaped section of the brain. When fear activates the amygdala, it temporarily overrides any conscious thought so the body can divert all its energy towards the threat. If we aren't faced with a life-threatening situation, our bodies quickly reverse the fear response. The amygdala triggers a release of stress hormones called end endorphins, um, which lead to bodily changes and prepares for danger. For example, our brain becomes hyper alert. Pupils dilate. Breathing accelerates. <laughs> when we are at higher intensity of fear, it can impact long-term memory. The central nervous system is made up of complex nerve tissue that controls the activities of the body. In vertebrates, it uses the brain and the spinal cord. The fear reaction starts in the brain and the central nervous system. It is the main control center as fear spreads throughout the rest of the body. As fear spreads throughout our whole body, our brain slowly makes adjustments on whether to use the fight, flight, or freeze mechanism in any situation. The purpose of fear is to motivate action. 
usually comes into play when we are trying to avoid something or we are preparing for a threat. But it also is a large factor when we are trying to start trying something new and great losses are at stake. Fear can also weaken our immune systems and can cause cardiovascular damage as well as gastrointestinal problems. Living under constant fear has many health issues, both mental and physical. And that's all we have for today, folks. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more. And make sure you turn on that notification button so you never miss a video. See you all next week on Science Face. Bye!